Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, coming out of that workshop also, as you heard this morning, we will also be looking along with Carnival Cruise Lines to see how we can actually activate some of those suppliers into Carnival's uh, supply chain. And that's another commitment that we are working on with New Zealand and also Australia, obviously, because uh, the headquarters of, of, of uh, Carnival are in, is actually in, in Australia. So to actually show how a country in Africa is activating some of these kinds of ideas, I'm going to invite Florence Kata, who I think everyone in, uh, in this circuit knows very well. Uh, Florence is the CEO of Uganda Export Promotion Council and, and a very good advocate on behalf of exporters out of Uganda. Uh, thank you, Patricia. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. I'll start by expressing my appreciation to the think tank that was, and I believe still is, behind selecting tourism to be one of the social economic growth pillars, especially for LDCs. I believe we still have a lot to do in promoting and priming the role of services in the development and growth of LDCs. So uh, yesterday we had a rich and highly interactive workshop and we were discussing the integration of art and craft and creative industries, culture and heritage into tourism as a growth pillar. The proposed discussions that we had for a future project to be developed is in the context of Uganda and Ethiopia. So I'll be presenting the conclusions and findings and recommendations of the workshop with my colleague Ephraim from Ethiopia. We shared the experiences of Turkey and how they have achieved the successes that they do have in this kind of context of mainstreaming art, culture, creative industries, and heritage into their tourism. We brainstormed on the possibilities, the processes, the possible outputs, benefits, and how they could positively impact players along the tourism value chain, especially in the context of poverty reduction, gender empowerment. Yesterday, we learned a new term called women streaming, how the women could stream along and support the micro-enterprises, because this is a sector where we have a lot of micro-enterprises that are players along the value chain. And in the sense, the discussion further delved in how these micro-enterprises could actually have a business model integrated within the mainstreaming of these particular aspects into tourism. Uh, we've just had the P's presented with an added P from, was that uh, Mozambique? No, it was uh, Madagascar. Um, in our discussion yesterday, the P's that we intend to incorporate included things to do with ethics. How do we bring ethical factors into this kind of a program? In addition to the profitability in a sustainable manner for the people that are along the value chain of these tourism circuits. And therefore, probably for my friend from Madagascar, the P's become bigger, the people for P, the P for people, the P for profit, the P for planet, the P for private and public sector partnerships, all did emerge in our discussion yesterday. Our assignment as we live therefore, is how to go and put together a well-consolidated, well-thought-out, incorporating all the imperatives that emerged in yesterday's discussion, as I've just summarized, in writing the project proposals that will certainly result into implementation and 
tangible effects and results hopefully will be seen. And I look forward to a time when we shall come back to celebrate the successful deliverables in Ethiopia and Uganda. I'll present the first part of the conclusions of the discussions yesterday as were captured by the rapporteur yesterday. Project ideas have been presented and a lot of interest was aroused. And the two countries I've just mentioned, Uganda and Ethiopia, presented their respective project ideas. And through further assessment and project planning in the countries, we will move from the project idea stage to the project development level, targeting donors' interests. So for the donors who are here, thank you for opening your doors for us. Country ownership and resource mobilization. The two countries have a vision for the development of the tourism sector. They are ready to exploit, uh, we are ready to exploit our competitive advantages and we will promote in the process women, youth, and other vulnerable groups as beneficiaries of the inclusive tourism projects. We shall promote our projects in order to mobilize resources and seek partnerships with institutions such as CBI, which has already stated their interest in supporting us. The needs to be addressed. The needs to be addressed for a successful inclusive tourism project that were identified include, one, involvement of all stakeholders, in particular private sector, public support, strategic institutions, and identification of reliable partners. Two, creation of local institutional infrastructure, like business hubs. Here we shared the example of the ethical fashions in Kenya and Uganda, which have already started on something that is replicable in terms of a business hub for project implementation and sustainability. Three, the development of value-added products using fair labor when meeting buyers and other requirements. Remember I said we shall include ethical issues and fair labeling, fair trade labeling will be one of the tools that we shall include in our buyer-seller engagements. Four, we need to meet the MDGs, especially on the gender and youth dimensions, as well as environmental sustainability, and we shall take this into account in the project design phase. Number five, the need for marketing approach and support the entire marketing process thinking of the start to finish in an export readiness kind of structure. So we shall need to have stories behind the products, geographical indications, and all the soft and hard infrastructure that we shall need in order to have a sharp marketing approach that will be successful. Number five, the need to diversify. The diversification of products and services that are offered to the tourists will be important. I believe you all know that when you unbundle the tourism chain, lots of products, lots of services, several players come into play. So we need to see how to strategically include this diversification into the loop of the project that we are going to write at the point of the project phase planning. I'll now call upon Ephraim, my colleague from uh, Ethiopia. He is the director for heritage inventory in the Ministry of Culture and Tourism in Ethiopia to present to you the recommendations that emerged from the workshop. Thank you very much for your support, for the participation, and for listening. And if I don't get a chance to uh, see most of you because I'm about to leave, I wish you all the best and look forward to meeting you once again in this wonderful forum. Thank you.